Boom! The Mirage M10 Power Zoom. Yeah, what on earth is this? A Mirage. It's made by a company called IFBA. In, well, sold by a company called IFBA in France uh, through Dixon's in the UK. But it's not made by them. In fact, without anyone looking it up, can anyone recognize who the, uh, the maker of this, uh, this camera might be? Let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm probably about 20 seconds ahead of the chat here. But while I put these gloves on um, to, in order to touch this thing, Let's see if uh, if anyone can uh, can can recognise this type of camera, the lovely wooden panelling and the absolutely disgusting sticky eye cup. That's a big clue for you all. Casper, Daddy, you are correct. It is a. It was made by Chinon, and Chinon are notorious for their eye cups turning into tar over the years. In fact, that's why there's a blue paper here because I don't want it. Uh, fouling up whatever my, my table. I'm going to throw this paper away at the end. This is something, if you ever buy a chin on and you see in the pictures, like the, the eye cup is a bit disintegrated like this. Be very careful when you, when you get it. Do not touch it. I don't know what kind of devil's skin flaps they make these eye cups out of, but they degrade into, let me put some on my finger here, into this black tar uh, and I've actually, I, I held off on cleaning this up because I wanted to show you all. It is foul. It, anything it touches gets black tar on it. I can't even get it off it. Oh, my God. So what do you do about this? Well, firstly, there's no saving it. You've got to get rid of this. You've got to just chuck it the hell out. And then somehow um, I'm going to have to sort of unscrew this and remove all these little bits of crud. Oh, it's already like this. If you do get some on your hands, a bit of isopropyl alcohol will take it off. And in fact, isopropyl alcohol on a rag, <laughs> I can't use my index finger anymore because I've got black tar on everything now. Just to show you. Oh my God, it's everywhere. Oh crap. So if you put that, let's spray a bit of that onto there. So that will actually take the tar off eventually. But then watch out, this rag doesn't touch anything because that's going to infect everything with black tar. It is nasty. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to properly clean this up later. But I've got, I've, I think I've made my point here that, um, yeah, watch out for chin on eye cups. And if you see a, if you see a camera which um, has an eye cup like that, it's most likely a chin on. Whoever was in charge of making the eye cups at chin on, they should be buried in that crap it's like that stuff in that in that alien film you know the um the one with the with the more recent one with the the pool of black nastiness that infects people anyway so oh now my isopropyl alcohol bottle is covered in the stuff never mind let's get on to the camera so the mirage m10 power zoom first thing you have to know about this is that it's really heavy not only does it have this like totally retro wooden paneling on both sides it is it is 1.8 kilos that is that is heavy for a camera it's it's I don't know how long I can even hold it up this way it is I don't know why it's so heavy I mean I quite like good metal bodies and uh, and heavy stuff it might be the lens because look at the size of that lens that is a big ass lens I've got um, a, a, a bolia with a with a giant zoom lens on it and I don't think it's even as big as this why do they put such a big lens on it? It might be to gather lots of light because this thing goes all the way down to f1.7, which is not bad. Um, there's only a few cameras which go lower than that. I think I've got a, a UMIG which goes to 1.2. So uh, <laughs> they <laughs> Remjet said so they spent all the material budget on the wood panels. Yeah, quality, quality. Anyway, so let's have a look at some features on this thing. Oh, does it work? Should we have a look? Firstly, let's have a look. Where do you put the batteries? Well, as usual, the batteries go into here. And it's one of these nice little uh, sort of uh, these units, these uh, these things that uh, Sankyos have and Chinons have. And underneath it, I didn't realize this till, till later, but see that, there we go. The light meter batteries. Yes, it's got the dreaded light meter batteries. Two of them go underneath a flap here. In fact, maybe, whoa, that just popped out. There you go. So you've got to put your light meter batteries in there. I've never seen this system before. And then you've got to get that into there. 
and then you get your drive batteries on top of it and let's uh, have a listen see if this uh, see if it wants to work let's get the old microphone on here let's see what it sounds like yeah. quite a, like a, quite a dainty it's not a little noise it's not a, it's not a, it's not a heavy clunker it's going, it's not particularly loud. I just expected something like this to be going, you know, but it uh, seems to work. Uh, well, let's see for sure. Ah, uh, I can't even hold it up for very long. So yes, batteries go in there. Easy peasy, battery check. So there's a battery check here for the motor, which the needle goes up, good. And the uh, light meter also, needles, needles jumping. The eject, for some, for some reason, there's an eject button here, which you slide upwards, and then it opens up this thing. There's a huge amount of space inside here. I, it's, it's, it's got, like, when the cartridge goes in, then there's, there's all this extra space for some reason. Who knows? Anyway, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty clean in there. It's got, well, here we have the, uh, the cartridge. Oh, if I can see this. There we go. There's the cartridge ASA detector here that's better so that will push that'll get pushed in in various amounts depending on what what ASA cartridge you've got in there um, and in fact let's put a cartridge in an expired Kodachrome why not and the cartridge is going in there we go there we go so nice and in it goes and we close that and the funny thing is the light meter on this thing and I only discovered this uh, today is the light meter doesn't work unless there's a cartridge in. Never mind putting batteries into it, it won't actually do anything until you put the cartridge in. So what cartridges can this camera automatically meter? Quite a few, it turns out. This thing can take, uh, can automatically meter uh, ASA 25, you won't find any of that probably, 40, so that's uh, 50D, Kodak 50D it'll do. 64, if you find any, um, any old Ektachrome 64. It'll do ASA 100, so you've got your Ektachrome 100D uh, there. Also, um, uh, Tri-X, uh, which is, is Tri-X 200, I think it's 200. Also does 160 ASA and 250 ASA. Basically, anything other than uh, 500T, this thing will automatically meter. Though I say that advisedly, that the, 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 uh, the automatic light meter might actually be buggered, might not be very accurate, but it does move around when I, when I put a light in there. So. Uh, Here's hoping. What else does it have here? Two buttons here. What do they say? They say 32 and backlight. Now, 32, of course, is to do with our running speed because it's got the old, if you want to run the... There we go. So if you want to run the, uh, the, the camera at 18 frames a second and then suddenly go into slow motion, listen to this. See? Speeds up. Um, talking about frames a second around here, you've also got uh, 18 frames a second and 12 frames a second for some reason. Probably if you want to go in really, you know, low light, you can under crank it to 12, which is a nice feature. Let's face it, 20, 12 FPS is a lot more useful than 24 these days with the price of film. Uh, in fact, let's hear the, that might as well, while we're at it, just for completeness sake, let's hear the noise of the camera at 18 and at 12. So 18 and at 12. Yeah, slower. Yeah, it works. Very nice. What else we got? Well, here's our uh, footage counter, the usual, just in meters and feet. And it's got, of course, it's got power zoom. Power zoom lens, which, oh, uh, let's hear that going. Hey, there it moves. Bit squeaky, but it works. Yay. There we go. This is confusing it's it's got a lightning and an f on it which leads me to think that it's to do with a flash but i don't know why you would push that in to, to cause the flash to go off because usually you know with these things that have flash sinks like the sankyos it'll just automatically get triggered when you pull the trigger here but this thing i don't know you can you can film and then hit the flash button very odd talking of sync at the back here this but this thing here is one of those control wires. It's a it's a little mini uh, micro jack which will go to a tape recorder and start triggering the tape recorder when you hit the run button, which is uh, well, it's a, it's obsolete. 
um, kind of uh, uh, system now. You might as well just uh, film with a clapperboard and, and whatnot. I, I don't have a cable, a micro jack cable to go into a tape recorder. In fact, my tape recorder is not even working. So just take it from me. You won't probably need that. What else we got here? Well, at the front here, bit nothing particularly amazing. It's the ugh, it's the run lock button. So lock, can't do it. Run, run, and if you push it down and turn it, there we go, hands free. The usual, kind of standard, par for the course. These two things here, what have we here? There's two of these. Now, they look like they could take a shutter release cable. So let's plug one in, see what it does. Let's try this one on the left first. Okay, well, this is exciting. What's it gonna do? Let's put the microphone and... Weird noise. It's single frame, basically. When you when you when you activate that, look look down there, and I'll flick this this cable release. Whoa. There it goes, one frame. You can see that very easily. Nice. So what does the other one do? Let's see what the other one does. I think I think we all know what the other one does. Yeah, yeah just it just runs the camera with the uh, shutter release cable simple as it's a kind of a, it's more of a mechanical camera this thing rather than an electronic one a lot of the stuff is because this is just a you know it's just a one of these things it's not a, it's not one of those ones those electronic ones um is there anything left to show you on this it's just the lens here really the lens goes from 6.5 millimeters which is pretty wide all the way to 65 which is uh yeah it's not bad it's a pretty good zoom lens and the distance here that goes from 1.5 meters, well, obviously to infinity. There it is, yeah. Ah, finally, what's this on top? What have we got here on top? Something very important, actually, a couple of important things. Firstly, this is the uh, manual exposure, which you can go from auto, you turn that to manual. In fact, I think I've got a picture of the view inside the camera. There we go. Yeah, I took that um, with my phone down the viewfinder, got some of that black tar on the phone. Thank you very much, chin on, bastards. But, you know, it's quite simple. You just turn that thing and that, that, that black needle goes around the, uh, from, from zero to, uh, from one point, f1.7 up to 16 or 22. And that circle at the top, um, I believe, is, um, will just show you the film running. It'll, it's a film running indicator. Pretty standard. And finally, Oh yeah, you've got a a flash um, a flash gun thing there with a little knob in there, and if you push down on that thing, it will uh, remove the daylight filter. Also, and this is a bit odd, I don't know why, but this button here. Okay, it's not in focus. There we go. It says filter on it, and when you hold that down, it takes out the uh, daylight filter. Now you can just about see in the very center there it's coming and going and it's a bit odd because you have to hold that down so it's like if you go outside with some tungsten film if you go from daylight to tungsten light you've got to hold this down while you film I don't know a bit weird that but of course the camera can automatically with this knob ugh, with this button here the camera will actually automatically cancel the daylight filter if your cartridge has a notch for it so generally you know I I, I wanted to hate this camera, to be honest. I uh, Quite often, wooden panelling on a camera is a sign of shit quality. Not always. In fact, after today, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, I have to re-examine that, that opinion because uh, everything works on this thing and it does have a pretty good feature set. You know, you can, you can crank the motor at different speeds, you can put a flash on it, you can, you can run it single frame, you can run it um, remotely. You know, you can uh, do auto and manual exposure. Very important if you're going to shoot some uh, expired film. So, you know, other than the weight, maybe, maybe the weight is, is a good thing. Maybe that's why it's still working, this thing. But other than the weight, the Mirage M10 Power Zoom is not a bad little piece of kit. In fact, um, you can see its, uh, its provenance here. If uh, this is, of course, this is film corn. Um, but if you have a look at some chinons, there you go. Oh, no, that's the Mirage as well. 
There, see, that's a chin on. Very similar. Very similar. You can tell that they, they had a bit of panelling left over. Because this was made in 74, 75. But their chin on stopped putting wooden panelling on their cameras around the early 70s. So they probably, when the French, when IFBA came to them and said, uh, voulez-vous uh, camera... Oh, God, my French is gone. Would you, yeah, they say, can you make a camera for us? The, the, the chin on people said, actually, yes, we've got a whole load of leftover wooden panelling, which we can, we'll make a nice little camera for you there. So enough of that. Let's have a look to see how much would it cost to buy yourself one of those uh, Mirage M10s on the eBay? Well, I only found one that had ever been sold on eBay for the princely sum of £13.99. So, you know, if you find one, they're probably up pretty undervalued. When was that sold? 22nd of March this year. Huh. Let's just have a quick look at the comments here. Um, what's the filter thread size? 67, 72. That is a good question. I reckon I could get an approximation of what the filter size is. My God, that's, that's like 75 millimeters. Holy crap. And look, and talking of holy crap, look, see, touches anything. The black gunk is back. That's a very big filter. Hmm. Hope I've got an adapter to do that. Anyway, should we see some footage? Let's see some footage that we shot. I shot some 50D on this and let's see what the result of that was. Well, the 50D for a start, I developed it in some uh, ECN2, which um, was a little bit uh, old. So I had to do a test run first, just to make sure that the, uh, the, develop, the developer and everything was working. So I went um, and filmed some with my UMIG, my Yumic Mini 5, my trusty Yumic Mini 5. And yes, it worked. I did it a few different times, lengths of time here. I did it at three minutes, that's five minutes, seven minutes. There, you can really see the difference there, leaving in the developer for longer or shorter. Three, five, seven. See, it gets, it gets more contrast the longer you leave it in the color developer. So let's have a look at see and see what that footage looked like from the Mirage M M10. Um, on Kodak 50D, lovely sunny day. I think I shot this at about f8, maybe, f5.6. I've slowed this down a little bit because I only shot a few seconds because film is expensive, as we know. Not bad. I could, I, it was hard to film this because I couldn't put it up to my eye without getting one of that comical black ring around my eye from the tar. So I kind of estimated. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can't really complain. I mean, it's a decent lens. Obviously, the scan I did was on my Wolverine, so it's not, you know, it's not the best quality picture. But the thing works. The Mirage M10. A surprisingly not bad camera. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it much. I mean, it's it's just so bulky, so heavy, and it, it lays black crap everywhere I, I put it. Well, I'm going to have to sort that out in the, in the end. And I'm going to watch what I touch for the rest of the show. <laughs>